Hey guys, I've got a, what is it, 20 minute rapid game on, on the board. My opponent's rated 1397 and we are playing the French. And it's the French advance. Always good to see. So I'm playing now c5, immediately contesting the d4 pawn. Okay. And now knight c6, that's a second attacker. Alright, and now I think I'm um, going to play bishop d7 rather than the immediate uh, queen b6. Because he's got three defenders already. All right, queen, pawn, and knight here. Okay, now what he's done is he's blocked off one of the defenders. Okay, so the queen is now no longer defending. So now I might play queen b6 here because I've now got three attackers against only two defenders because the queen is queen is blocked off. So what's he going to do? Is he going to move the bishop a second time and lose the tempo? No, he's going to drop the pawn, I think. Okay, now the, if you play the French, there is something you have to watch out for here. Be I'm okay because I've played this bishop move already, but if I hadn't played that move, there is a danger, right? Which could be like pawn takes, uh, for example, knight takes, queen takes, something like this. Um, that's if the knight takes. Okay, so knight takes, right? So, and then if knight takes and queen takes, right? If this bishop wasn't here, White would have a tactic, which is bishop b5, check, right? And then win the queen. So, I hope you can see that. But I'm okay because I've played this. So there is no check by the light squared bishop, okay? So, White now has a decision to make. Notice that this bishop's the only defender of that pawn. This knight is attacked once, defended once by the queen. And obviously, you know, I've got ideas here of threatening to capture the knight as well. And this pawn is now looking somewhat isolated. Right, big question is, do I want to trade knights? And I figure, why not? I'm up a pawn. Um, okay. So I'm slightly behind in development here, but I do have a pawn advantage in the middle of the board. So, bishop here is a thought with the threat of pushing the pawn to win material. Uh, bringing my knight out is also an idea. This pawn is currently undefended. So I've got maybe knight e7, knight g6 could attack that. Let's go for this tactic first of all. Could be relatively winning. Um, just need to watch out, watch out for these bishops. You know, my opponent does have some compensation for the pawn, but this is the immediate threat. Oops. There, with the bishop attacking the queen. That'll be a double attack with the discovery. So what my opponent should be thinking is, why did black just make this move? Why did black just move that bishop another time? And hopefully, for him, he'll uh, spot the, the threat. Also now having opened up the board a little bit here, my French bishop, my, the light squared bishop is traditionally very often um, poor in the French. Uh, but now it does have options, which is nice. Pointing down now towards the corner. Uh, if my opponent does something and, and resolves this, this double attack threat, I think my plan is going to be knight out here, probably knight to here and attack this pawn. My queen can always come back and attack the pawn another time. So this is a 6-10 game for me. This bishop is kind of tied to the defense of b2. So for example, okay, right, so he's avoided the discovery on the queen. Now what else has changed? Okay, so one thing I notice is he's now defending that pawn with the queen, but I'm going to bring my knight out anyway. I want to develop my knight so that I can castle. My bishop could come here. Um, but I think knight g6 looks fine. 
maybe drop my queen back, add a second attacker. He can bring his bishop out. Also notice that now the queen is de defending that pawn as well. So that, that was a good all-purpose move, a good coordinating move from white. So here, despite all the... Oh, it won't let me get rid of my arrows. Okay, so the bishop's now come out. The queen is defending that, so I can't take that now. And I'm going to bring my knight out anyway and attack the undefended bishop. And really put the question to my opponent. Okay, there we go. So now this pawn is defended twice. Um, this pawn here is pinned. It's worth noting. I think I want to bring my bishop out. And the question is, where does my bishop want to come? Uh, that seems to make sense. Obviously, you can't come here. Any point in bringing my bishop here and attacking the knight? If I take the knight and b takes, then my opponent's got an isolated c pawn. But I kind of want to keep the bishop pair anyway. Um, so I think I've got rook c8, get my rook onto the open file. That seems sensible. Yeah, I'm going to play that. I, I can't see my opponent actually having an attack immediately. Might still drop my queen back here. This dark square bishop's kind of trapped now on this side of the board. Hasn't got any squares it can move to without being taken by my knight. So that's not a great piece right now. This this piece has a lot more activity, but again, can't can't really come. Okay, so he's met my rook move with a move of his own. I feel like I want to develop my bishop. If I put it here, it's defended only by the queen. If I put it here, it's defended by the knight. Assuming my king's about to castle. Uh, there's nothing really undefended on my opponent's side of the board. Hmm. I think this is slightly more aggressive. So I'm going to play that move. Don't think white is really minded to capture that knight. If he does, I could capture with the f pawn and then castle here and put my rook on a semi open file. Okay, it looks like now he's planning b4. So I might lose a tempo there if I retreat the bishop. So let's castle anyway. Let him play this move. Then my bishop can always come back to the e7 square. <coughs> In fact, that's also an option now. So let's consider that. There I'm attacking the knight. It's defended by the rook. I'm also adding a second attacker to this pawn. I don't know, I'm kind of tempted to play that means the rooks then tied to the knight. Queen and bishop are both tied to the defense of this pawn. Might still drop my queen back here and add a third attacker to the pawn, so let's give it a go. It's an outpost because there's no pawns here or here that can dislodge the bishop. And I've always got the option of trading it off for the knight. This pawn is still pinned here. Do I have to worry about the pawn advancing? Not really. I can always trade off the knight and then grab the pawn with a bishop. Oh! Okay, he kind of wants to. Does he want to go in there and attack my rook? Am I concerned? I can play rook c7. I could put the question to the knight. Knight comes in here. Rook there. 
Knight's kind of then trapped. Um, or, now I can't trade off that bishop, right? So now if he starts to bring that up, that's what I need to be concerned about. A4, A5, my queen has to retreat away from the defense of that. So now he's attacking the bishop. Here. So we just trade off. Let's trade off my light square bishop. It's my worst bishop. Because right, I do have a few light square pawns here in the middle. Okay, my queen's defending that bishop. I've got two attackers on here. I can't drop my queen back there because of the rook. If I trade off rooks, this rook comes out. This pawn's still defended three times. But still pinned. I could play a6 and kick the bishop away. Bishop might come in there. In which case, I've got that. I'm still a pawn up. So. The queen is the only defender of this bishop. Uh, is there any way I can dislodge the queen? Takes, 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 takes. Do I win a pawn that way? Let's think this through. So the queen is one of the two defenders of this pawn and is the only defender of that bishop, right? So if knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, bishop, and have I won myself a second pawn and gained a two pawn majority in the middle. So I get a pawn, he takes me, I take him, he takes me, I take him. Uh, I think so. So should I take with the bishop first and threaten to capture here? Which means he's got to recapture with that. Let's try it. He could play in like an in-between move like that, but then I can just trade off the rooks. Huh. Okay. So now takes. Now he can't play this because I've got knight takes d7. So I think I've won myself a second pawn that way. And if takes, I take the bishop. And there's no in-between, I don't think. Bishop comes here or here, knight can take the bishop. Also might have knight to here at some point. So simply, just trying now to secure a an advantage in the ending. Okay, so he's retreated the bishop. Now I have options. Defend the knight with that or move the knight away. Could bring the knight back here. There's a few options, which is best. Can't come there. Could trade rooks. This attacks the undefended pawn. Looks like maybe the critical move. Yeah, I think so. So he's got to defend that pawn now. Might move my queen away, push my pawns up on the light squares, and reduce the bishop's options. Now, this light square bishop on its own is looking less good because the more light squared pawns I've got, the fewer options that bishop has. Still kind of getting over a cold, so I'm not feeling 100% chess capacity right now. But I'm in a relatively comfortable position. All I need to do now is not screw it up. Try and simplify my way to an ending. So we've got two against two on this side of the board. My advantage is these two pawns. So the general principle is going to be to centralise rooks. Obviously I can't play rook to e8 now because the bishop's guarding it, but that's the general principle. Maybe just rook here 
and just try and send Dave the deep one on his merry way. Okay, so he's defended that. Makes sense. Right. So I'm just going to push this. I know it's not a mistake. Might bring my queen over, then b5. Just over defend the knight. Right, so the bishops now run off. Okay. Um, maybe it's time to bring the knight back around. Uh, I'd like to have another attacker on that pawn. I'd like to get my queen attacking that pawn, but I don't really know how. Maybe queen back to here. Ideas of this. That looks okay. The rook's undefended, so that's again a quite a forcing move. And my knight is still looking at this pawn, so I think that's the way to do it. Keep the knight there as the attacker on the pawn, then put pressure on the rook. Oof! Okay, I think I have to take. Alright, I think his idea is going to be to something like this. Hmm, let's think this through. Takes queen here. King retreats, rook across, then I have to push a pawn to get an escape for the king. Queen could come in, king escapes, I think I'm okay. I think I have to do that. Oh, he's gone rook first. Same difference, I think. Now the queen comes in, okay. And now I can push this. Queen can come to either of these squares, but I still have this. And then I've got three major pieces all in the back rank. So I'm not too scared. I think my opponent has lashed out there. I think premature attaculation, as Simon Williams would say. I think he was feeling the squeeze and blinked. So now I'm plus four. I have an extra knight and I have an extra pawn. So he didn't really think that one through too hard, did he? Doesn't matter, queen can come in here or here, it's not mate, because I've got an escape. If queen retreats back to h5 with check, I can run away again. And then I'm just going to bring my big guns, line them all up with the king, get my king to relative safety, safety, somewhere like that. My knight's happy, I'm not staring down this pawn. It looks like a winning position. Because so my opponent's trying to attack with two pieces, and in this situation it's just not enough. He's got a check here. Can't take the pawn right now. I'm threatening this. Huh. So if rook here. He checks, I move away. Rook here. He can't take. Queen h5, again I just move king e7, then try and just bring my queen in, trade off. I think I'm alright. My knight can always come in as well, maybe. Just don't think he's got enough forcing moves here. Maybe queen there check. But then king moves away, and queen can't take that because it's. No, that doesn't work. <sighs> don't think he's got enough here. He's got queen there. He can't. He can't take that one. So that's that's out of the question. He's got two checks, but then I just move away. And then I think he's out of good checks. Huh. What's your game? I don't know. 
Let's think it's queen f8. Is he going to try and take this and then rook takes? I think queen f8 looks all right. Queen here. I've got two defenders on that. I've got two defenders on that. I don't know about knight in here. Because if he could sack his rook and remove quite an important pawn. So I think queen f8 looks solid. I've got three defenders on that. Now, this pawn isn't attacked. He's not going to sack a rook here. I'm sure he's not. Okay. Now here is forced. Just don't think he's got enough. He is using all his pieces. It's just not enough. I'd like to play queen f7, attack the queen, defend the pawn. So I've got four and two pawns, he's got three and two. So I have pawn advantage. Oof, what? <sighs> okay, I still think queen f7. Decent move. Alright, so now he's attacking my knight. Knight's defended by the rook. I could push here, attack the queen. How does that look? Or oh, I've got this. Ah, didn't notice that. Yeah, because this pawn was pinned and it was the only defender of the pawn there. Okay, the knight's relatively safe. This pawn is actually under threat. Bring my knight back, which defends the pawn. Or king f8, queen defends the pawn, and his queen is now under attack. So I need to make sure my rook is safe. What's he got? Oh, then he's got two attackers on this pawn. Yeah, so if I do king here, he's got rook takes. That pins the rook. Dang. I think maybe knight back, because that means that this rook has to stay there, because I've got the threat of a back rank mate. Knight back here. Defending the pawn, and the threat of rook c1 mate if this guy moves, so he can't move off the back rank. That was a good move, though. I'm down to seven and a half minutes, too. Ooh, barraging me now. This attacks the queen. So he's threatening rook takes. Okay, I think that's all right, this, this move. Now the queens are facing off. That's still defended. Rooks are defending each other. I've actually got coordination here. Don't, has he got... Can he sack a rook? Surely not. Sacks the rook I take. Queens are still facing off. Knight's defending the queen also. Hmm. So that's his immediate critical issue. He stands to lose his queen. So now we've got three and three on the king side, two on two on the queen side. My advantage is I have an extra knight. Hmm. He's using his time well. Okay. 
queens retreated to here. I'm going to play, I'm thinking of bringing one of my rooks to d8 with the idea of moving the knight. And I can't go there, could go here. So moving rook d, g to d8 with a threat of knight to here winning material. Because it's discovery on the queen and I'm attacking the rook. It had to be that one so that this rook defends that square. Can't move my knight there because queen takes knight and he's resolved both threats in one go. Whew. Queen here is an idea. He moves the rook off the back rank. I play rook c1, a force exchange of rooks. And then he has to take back. So that's good for me. So this is my idea. So I think my opponent at 1400 should recognize that threat. He should be able to identify that and uh, do something about it. So he might just drop his rook back. He might move his queen. I'm still coordinated. Okay, he's moved the queen. I still have this as an idea. Or I have queen here. Again, it's pretty forcing. Uh, it undefends this pawn. So he might play queen here. No, he can't do that. Okay, let's uh, attack again. Or is there a better move? Okay, I'm just going to play rook here, actually. He's not going to sack his rook now, eh? Ah, he's attacking the pin piece. Good push. Rook takes, knight takes, queen takes, check, move back. Push. Keep the time pressure on. I'm just under six minutes. He's got 6.47. But I think that would just... He'd be down a full rook then, instead of just being down a, a minor piece. And I'm now threatening this. It really does kind of de defuse his attacks. What on earth is that? Okay. Um, right, I have f5, hits the queen and defends the pawn. Kind of happy with that. Maybe queen f6 is going to come if he gives check there or there. And I'm still coordinated. So coordination basically means that everything's defended. And it's practically always a good idea. But it's certainly a, a sharp, tense position. My knight's doing good work. All right, it's come all the way back. Okay, we have an undefended pawn there and an undefended pawn there. So, is it time to throw in the queen threat? He hasn't got any good checks then, has he? So, um, let's try it, yeah? Or, or knight there, threatening the rook. Oh, that pawn isn't undefended, it's defended by the rook. Okay, if I do knight here, you can't go there, there, there. Now let's do queen there, it's more forcing. He's got to do something about that threat. He's got to do something about the threat on the rook as well, but get out of it relatively easily. Queen's also defending this pawn. It's now defended three times. All right, this is fine. Just gonna bring my queen back. If he goes back there, I want to avoid repetition. So I might just push g6, change the position, okay. Now, 
maybe it's time to bring in the rook or maybe it's time to uh, I don't know, do I want to push that? Seems alright. Knight here's an idea, attack the rook. Five minutes, so what he's trying to do now I think is not lose. He's got a slight time advantage. Okay. So, attack the rook. It's a forcing move. Now he's got to think. I've got to give him pause for thought. Now if he comes here, the knight's actually pinned because that rook's undefended. So I think I'd have to push there. That's what I'm expecting. My queen is attacking it on there. Oh, okay. Let's push this anyway. I'm not sure what the point of that move was, but let's move my king up. Maybe put my rook across here, queen here. Queen's defending that pawn. Okay, you've pinned the knight. I'll just defend. He's, uh, he's fighting. Rook here looks good. There's two attackers on that pawn. Should win the A3 pawn. Which I quite like. Or retreat the king and unpin the knight. He hasn't got A4 because I can always recapture on B5. But this is idea number one. I'm now ahead in time. Okay, this still works. Two attackers on this pawn here, and I'm attacking the queen. So he's got to do something. He can't go there, he can't go there because I'll take. He can't go there because I'll take. Ouch! <laughs> you muppet, hunty. All right, okay. I've lost my advantage now. I'm now down the exchange. However, ah, oh, what a jellyhead move. That was terrible. Okay, but I'm threatening his queen. Okay, you give check to me. That's fine. Okay, 326, game on. That's defended. Everything's actually defended right now. The game Mrs. Hudson is on. I was treading so carefully too. Three minutes, two seconds. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Hmm. This rook's not doing an awful lot. I think he wants to come back here, something like this. Now it's my turn to practice the subtle art of not losing. My knight can come back here, defended by the queen. This pawn's not defended. I don't want to trade off queens. No, no, no. I don't want to find myself in an ending with two rooks against a rook and a knight. Hell no. Two minutes thirty against four minutes. That was stupid. Blundered a full rook. <sighs> okay. Play queen here. Threaten rook there. Right? I'm now using the clock as a weapon against my opponent. Two minutes twelve. Okay, you've pinned the knight. What evs? Uh, don't, I don't want to line up my king and my queen. Nope. I'm going to put my queen there. Might put my king here, something like that. His queen can come round. Okay, he's putting pressure against the knight. So what? King there. Two minutes eight. Two minutes five. Four. Three. You're not 
He's not going to sack a rook for it. He's not going to sack the exchange back. Oh, and he's down on time. Again, if this rook comes off the back rank, I have a sneaky little check here. What are you doing? Okay, let's come after this pawn, shall we? Hang on. Rook takes bang, and that's, that's all right. So now threatening this pawn here. That's fine. Let's um, take the pawn. If he takes, I'll take back. One minute, 36, five, four, three, two, one. Tension. I can't stand it. Queen back here, defends the pawn. My rook's defended by the queen. He can't come in here. He might come here and attack the pawn, but it's defended by the queen. Okay, let's just throw in a king move. Okay, and now you've just lost your queen. Desperation across the nation. And he's resigned. Boom, shakalaka, boom, boom. Well done. Four. That was a tense one. <sighs> now I need to go lie down in a darkened room. Okay. Uh, lots of fun. And I've managed to boost my rating just a little bit. Um, like I say, you know, not been too well recently, so I've not been playing a lot of rapid games. I've just been playing some Blitz for fun, right? I want to keep my hand in with some chess, keep my eye in a little bit, but I know I've not been on you know, the best form. Um, but yeah, I felt like I was up for a, a rated game, which is what rapid is to me. I managed to come away with a win, finally using time pressure as the decider, even in a 20 minute game. So there we go. Good game, thanks to my opponent. Thank, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Chess Bootcamp if you haven't subscribed. And I'll see you soon, guys.